The Eye of Terror is a realm of madness and despair. A massive warp storm where the boundaries between the immaterium and real space are at their weakest. The skies within weep blood, ancient stars burn in multicolored flares, and everywhere the whims of the dark gods of chaos hold sway. For 10,000 years, it has cast its shadow across the galaxy. The Eye of Terror is not a natural phenomenon. Before it burst into reality, the area of space in which it now burns was the heart of the ancient Eldari Empire. Their domain spanned across the galaxy, of which they were the unchallenged masters. Millennia of technological progress had freed the Eldari race from concerns of age, senility, disease, or even the monotony of labor. They instead dedicated their lives to pursuits of poetry, music, and artwork. But their lives were long, and the Eldari grew bored with such callings. Cults of excess formed across their worlds, secret groups dedicated to experiencing every sensation, whether pleasurable or painful. Bored with the mundane, the actions of the cults grew more hedonistic and depraved. Torture and murder replaced art and literature. The Eldari fell into a twisted ritual of self-destruction, with such acts no longer limited to hidden cabals, but rampant across their cities. Too late, the Eldari realized that their actions had rippled across the Immaterium, and given birth to a terrible new entity, the psychic embodiment of the corruption that now threatened to overwhelm their race. When the Chaos God Slanesh finally attained full sentience, the Eldari were ripped apart. Trillions of souls were inhaled by the God of Pleasure's first breath, and the warp energy of the Immaterium spilled over into the physical realm. The Eldari Empire was gone, and the Eye of Terror all that remained. Yet the death of the Eldari had been foreseen by a scattered few amongst their race. As their worlds grew more twisted and extreme, some scattered themselves across the wild fringes of the Empire, foregoing any luxury in favor of an ascetic way of life. Others found a refuge in the labyrinthine network known as the Webway, and fully embraced the corruption that had befallen their race, feeding off the suffering of others to stave off the corruption of their own souls. Desperate to remain one step ahead of Slanesh, who would never rest until she had consumed every Eldari soul, each fragment of their race had been forced to make a choice, to decide how they would survive in a new galaxy, without the might and wisdom of the Eldari Empire to guide them. But there were a few who refused to give in to both the despair and corruption that had gripped their fallen race. As their empire fell into depravity, they took to the stars in continent-sized craft worlds. For millennia, these craft world Eldari have struck back against the forces of chaos and the primitive Xenos usurpers who have defiled the ruins of their empire, in a vain or desperate attempt to bring about the return of their golden era. They have named themselves the Children of the Phoenix King, the Azurani. In the 42nd millennium, the Azurani are nearly an entirely void-born race. Many craft worlds drift across the stars, but they are fragments of a once greater whole, broken and scattered across the galaxy. In geography, culture, and technology, their disparate elements vary wildly, and even within a single craft world, there can be a great diversity of tradition and attitude. This is due in part to the nature of the craft worlds themselves. During the time of the Eldari Empire, these gigantic spacecraft habitats were self-sufficient, independent realms. They were deployed on great trading missions that might separate them from their kin for centuries, hundreds of thousands of light years beyond the frontiers of the Empire. This life attracted those with a strong sense of independence and self-reliance, a mindset that likely saved them during the fall of the Eldari and preserved them ever since. This same mindset, however, has further complicated any grand reunification. Each craft world instead pursues its own agenda, which to foreign observers might seem completely random. 
whatever purpose guides their actions, might have them come to the aid of beleaguered Imperial defenders one day, only to slaughter without mercy the next. Through their near mastery of the webway, a hyperdimensional construct of glowing tunnels across space, craft worlds can appear without warning across the galaxy, only to disappear and re-emerge somewhere else. For 10,000 years, the webway has allowed them to remain hidden and scattered, beyond the reach of those who would destroy them. The craft worlds have expanded greatly beyond their original purpose, becoming sanctuary worlds for the Eldari race and growing hundreds of times larger to accommodate this new role. As the craft worlds have grown, so too have the divisions between them. Each now possess their own history, traditions, and goals. There is no singular leader amongst the Azurani, no central government. Each craft world may instead possess different forms of leadership, from seer councils made up of powerful psychers to intricate alliances between rival Azurani clans. The only constant across the craft worlds is their dedication to the Azurani path. Every soul aboard a craft world is expected to dedicate itself to a specific discipline and focus the entirety of their efforts upon its study, practice, and eventual mastery. Then, the Azurani will choose a different path, and the process will begin anew. There are many paths, each with their own rewards and risks. Some are very clearly defined, with strict traditions and expected behaviors intended to build discipline and obedience. Others offer less guidance, but extended greater freedom, encouraging self-reliance and inner strength. Regardless of what path they embrace, these codes of behavior all have within them the same goal. They act as a form of physical and psychic protection against the emotional volatility of the Eldari race, allowing them to experience intense sensations without repeating the terrible excesses that led to the fall. In this way, the Azurani have found a way to avoid temptation and tame their excessively turbulent natures. The Path of the Seer, also known as the Path of the Witch, is the longest, most complex, most treacherous, and rarest followed path. Its few members become Seers, powerful psychers who have mastered their abilities and might command powerful forces without fear of attracting demons or creating rifts in the warp. Every Seer explores their psychic potential in their own way but the range of abilities open to them is vast. Some are able to use their powers to assist their brethren in battle, while others can look into the future and attempt to discern the best course of action for their craft world to take. For this reason, spirit seers, warlocks, and farseers are most often found in powerful councils who might govern an entire craft world. While few among their race will ever undertake the path of the seer, the Path of the Warrior is a calling that nearly all among their number will feel at least some point in their long lives. Young Azurani in particular are drawn to this focus, with the fierce, perhaps naive belief that through conflict and bloodshed, the Eldari Empire might be reborn. Most often, however, when the Azurani go to war, it is not to reclaim ancient glories, but merely to survive the many terrors that afflict the galaxy. But with centuries to hone their bodies and minds to a martial craft, the armies of the Azurani can accomplish extraordinary triumphs of the battlefield. Every warrior is a specialist in their own right, and each unit of such masters works in perfect concert with each other to produce a true symphony of destruction and careful grace that is distinctly Eldari. Within the path of the warrior are a number of aspect shrines said to embody some form of Cain, the Eldari god of war from myth and legend. Azurani who train within these shrines will become dedicated to a particular role on the battlefield at the expense of all others. The most common aspect is that of the Dire Avengers, and such warriors are first amongst their brethren. They are the least specialized and most flexible of all the aspects and it is for this reason that they make up the basic infantry of most Azurani war hosts. The Aspect Shrine of the Howling Banshees is a notable exception in the otherwise genderless meritocracy of Azurani. 
They are the embodiment of the Banshees of Eldari legend, daughters of the crone goddess Morai Heg, whose modern incarnation unleash a whirlwind of devastation through inhuman precision and efficiency within close quarters combat. Dark Reapers, by contrast, can be found on the periphery of any battlefield, providing long-ranged fire support. They are widely seen as the most menacing of the warrior aspects, delivering unrelenting destruction behind their grim, skull-masked helms. Fire Dragons revel in destruction like no other aspect shrine. They have chosen mastery over the highly dangerous and often unpredictable fusion weaponry of the Azurani. While neither swift nor long-ranged, they can reduce even the mightiest war machines or powered armor to burning slag. Swooping Hawks are among the most mobile of the Aspect Warriors, soaring over the battlefield on angelic wings. They are the eyes and ears of their brethren, scouting for the main force before falling from the skies like noble birds of prey within the midst of their enemies. Many other Aspect Shrines exist, but each craft world will typically maintain the presence of only a small number of shrines. Exceptions to this rule exist, with some harboring many and others dedicating themselves to but a single warrior aspect. Regardless, in battle, each shrine will be led by an exarch, warriors who have lost themselves upon that path and are unable to ever leave it again. They are awed for their complete dedication, but reviled for their lives of never-ending violence. But even the exarchs pale in comparison to the Phoenix Lords, the greatest warriors of the Azurani, who bear allegiance to no individual craft worlds, but instead, the entire warrior aspect. These beings achieve a kind of immortality, with the spirits of fallen Phoenix Lords incorporated into their armor, so their successor might make use of their knowledge and abilities. Regardless of which aspect warriors they bring to battle, the craft worlds are fully aware of the dwindling numbers of their race. Azurani doctrine is therefore preeminently focused on inflicting as much damage on the enemy without suffering any losses of their own. Hit and run attacks are most favored, devastating their opponents before they are able to muster an effective counterattack. How precisely this is achieved varies from craft world to craft world. The hyper militant craft world Beel Tarn, for instance, gathers a myriad of disparate aspect warriors together, utilizing seemingly discordant elements in the ultimate expression of combined arms. Craftworld Saim Han embraces maneuver, and their wild hosts are composed almost entirely of nimble jet bikes, swooping hawks, and other exotic war machines that unleash death at breakneck speeds. Craftworld Leanden, blighted by disaster, is a shadow of its former glory, and reliant not only on the Aspect Warriors for its continued survival, but wraithbone constructs. What might be mistaken for crude robots by the primitive species of the galaxy are instead masterful crafted works of art, and powered by the souls of fallen Azurani warriors. This process is abhorrent to their race, but Leandon's only remaining option. Craftworld Alitok likewise makes use of forces from outside the Path of the Warrior, preferring instead the deadly rangers of the Path of the Outsider. They prize misdirection and stealth above all else. Craftworld Ulfway is perhaps the most farsighted of the Azurani, blessed or perhaps cursed with many of the most powerful psychers in the galaxy. Here, the Path of the Seer is equally devoted to the art of war as the Path of the Warrior, and the Azurani from both are more often seen working together on the battlefield. The doctrine, aspect shrines, and the paths favored by Azurani varies from craft world to craft world, but in the heart of each sits an avatar. It is an incarnation of the bloody-handed god of war, Kayla Mensha Kane. When roused from its throne of smoldering iron, this avatar of Kane is the deadliest weapon the Eldari still possess an utterly terrible presence on the battlefield. To rouse such a being to action requires a terrible sacrifice and takes an abhorrent toll. 
it is only done in the most dire of circumstances. The Avatar of Cain is in many ways one of the last surviving fragments of the ancient Eldari religion. The God of War fought a titanic battle against Slanesh within the warp, but glutted with stolen power, she who thirsts proved the stronger. Cain was not consumed, however, but split into fragments, the Avatars. The Azurani cling tenaciously to their folklore and tradition, but unlike Cain, the gods and goddesses of those tales have long since been devoured by Slanesh. Val, god of smiths and craftsmen, Lilith, mistress of dreams and fortune, and many others, are still worshipped and remembered across the craft worlds. But the era in which they could bestow their blessings and wisdom is long over. Some, however, fear that Isha, goddess of the harvest, still lives trapped within the realm of another ruinous power of chaos, a fate far worse than death. Even Azuran, the ruler and most powerful amongst the Eldari pantheon, from which the Azurani now takes its name, is said to have been amongst the last consumed. In a final act, he bound his psychic might to the whole Eldari race, preventing Slanesh from absorbing all of its power. This sacrifice likely saved the Eldari from complete extinction, and the act is remembered still. Only one other god from the fallen pantheon is said to have survived the birth of Slanesh, Kegorak, the laughing god, the great fool, deity of tricksters and artists. According to legend, his mocking nature distanced him from the collective psychic corruption that ensnared the Eldari race. And while Cain fought with Slanesh, Kegorak hid within the webway. He remains there still if his followers can be believed, laughing at the Chaos Gods and harboring plans for revenge. While some across the Eldari have chosen to embrace the enigmatic Laughing God, to do so requires they leave the craft world and are no longer considered a member of the Azurani. But it may not be the machinations of Kegorak or the avatars of Cain that represent the last hope of the Azurani. In the days since the fall, each surviving fragment of the Eldari has made use of spirit stones, shining gems worn by every member of their race. These psychoreceptive crystals become attuned solely to the mind of its owner, and upon death, prevents their essence, or perhaps soul, from entering the warp and being consumed by Slanesh. Instead, the spirit stones of fallen Azurani are placed within an infinity circuit, a matrix of countless such stones contained at the core of every craft world. It is the closest thing the Azurani have to an afterlife, and the infinity circuits are prized above all else. For a time, spirit stones were left in peace only removed to power wraithbone constructs. Yet, there is a growing belief that the spirit stones within the Infinity Circuit might have an even greater purpose. Yanid, the Eldari God of the Dead, is rumored to be growing within the collective Infinity Circuits of every craft world and within the warp itself. If the souls of all Eldari, not just the Azurani, but those of their twisted cousins the Drukari and the Harlequins of Kegorak, if all can be united, then you need might awaken. If this can be achieved, then the God of the Dead can succeed where all others have failed, destroying Slanesh and freeing the Eldari from its thirst. All attempts to awaken you need have thus far failed, but through the actions of Eldrad Uthran, High Farseer of Craftworld Ulthwe, it has perhaps begun to stir. A new prophet, Yvrain, daughter of Shades, is said to be the champion of Yanid, and she has begun to unify the Eldari in a way not seen since before their fall. Few across the galaxy would welcome the return of a reborn Eldari Empire. But even the Inquisitors of the Imperium who have dedicated their lives to the pursuit of the Eldari recognize that their dying race has achieved an understanding of the Great Enemy far beyond the clumsy studies conducted by mankind. Perhaps it is through the Azurani alone that a true victory might be achieved, 
The answer to such questions undoubtedly lies within a secret craft world, whose existence is kept hidden even from the majority of their own race. It is known to only a few, and fewer still have been allowed to enter. But within lies a vast store of knowledge, home to all the secrets of the universe, and perhaps Kegarak's ultimate jest. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 